Hi, Michael Patine here for another episode of It's Cup of Time. And today I'm going to revisit a subject I've covered before in a multi-part series, and that is how to record your gongs. I've had some people ask me a few questions and wanting some clarification on things. So I thought today's topic I would cover the four basic setups for recording your gongs. And we'll go from easy and very inexpensive on up to sort of professional and how much money you want to spend. We'll cover the whole range. And we'll cover various different ideas that will allow you to record things in different manners for different results. All right. First, let's start with the most basic. And that is the self-contained digital recorder. So number one is to buy yourself a digital audio recorder that is all self-contained with built-in microphones. This is my Zoom H6 with some built-in small diaphragm condenser mics. Now I can take this out. I can record myself playing through these mics. Goes into an SD card. And then I can take the SD card out and plug it into my computer, either a laptop or a desktop, download the tracks and put them into an audio program to edit and process them. So this is the most basic way. Now Zoom and Tascam are probably the two biggest names in digital audio recorders. And they both have models that start at around the $100 range. So for $100, you get a small recorder, which is about half the size of this, with a pair of microphones attached to the end. And they're really high quality, too. It's surprising. You know, with today's technology, the sound is amazing off of these little recorders. And I've used a small Zoom H1N quite a bit to record. I even did a review a comparison with that one in an earlier video you can check out. That's a great little unit. So for around the $100 range, you can get into recording yourself. If you watch the sales, I've even seen some of these units on sale for like $79, especially around different holiday times or just they have a warehouse they want to clear out. I don't know, but I'm always checking prices of some, with some of the major sellers out there and I'll find great deals like that. But basically the $100 range gets you into the ball game. Record your tracks on the recorder, dump them onto your computer and process them for however you want to use it, however you want to release it. Or maybe you just want to record it for your own self so you can hear what you're doing, which I always recommend you do. So that's number one. Number two is to buy a digital recorder that has additional microphone inputs. Like the Zoom H6 here has four additional mic inputs, two on each side. And with that, then we can kind of up our game a bit and add some external microphones. Let's get these there. There we go. So as you can see, they're much bigger than the little guys that are built in. The nice thing about this, it allows you to choose what you want. With the all-in-one unit, that's the mics that are there. That's what you have to use. When you have the additional inputs, you can choose whatever types of microphones you have or want to use for different sounds, different purposes. So that's the second step, is get a bigger digital recorder with additional inputs, buy some additional microphones, like a stereo pair, if you want to record like live stereo, 
It's perfect to get a stereo pair of mics, plug them in, you're good to go. The same thing then, dump your tracks onto your computer to edit, and you're all set. Now some of these bigger units allow you to edit and, you know, process your tracks on there. But I find that a real pain because you've got a super tiny little screen and fiddly little buttons and all. I never do that. I process all my stuff on either a laptop or my desktop computer. It's just so much easier to do. And as far as audio processing, if you have a Mac computer, it comes with GarageBand for free, which is a great program. Otherwise, if you have a Mac or PC, there are other free programs out there that you can get or some inexpensive uh, starter programs that have limited functions but work great. You can also use something like Audacity, which is free to process you know, whatever you've recorded in there. So that's two. The third unit you could use, the third way, would be this. Now this is an older unit. This is about from about 2005. But things haven't changed that much except to get better. This belongs to my son. This is an older Tascam self-contained recorder. It has mic inputs in the back. This one has eight channels and a master channel. You have a, a volume fader. You have a pan control for left or right, an effects control because it has built-in effects like reverb, and you have low and high EQ on here. So everything can be recorded on this unit. You can edit it and process it on here, work with it, and you do not need a computer. So it's kind of nice, a whole standalone thing. Again, this is an older one, so it has a really tiny um, LED screen here, but the newer ones have a much bigger screen. Again, I find I prefer to transfer my tracks to a computer and work on a bigger screen. I find it much easier, and I prefer to work in uh, my preferred software, which is Logic on a Mac. But you can do these self-contained, or they do have an SD card that you can use to transfer things into your computer, or often you can transfer things through USB to your computer. So this is a great way to expand your recording, especially if you want to use multiple tracks. You can get them usually like six or eight tracks, 12 tracks, 16 tracks, 24 tracks, depending on your budget. And again, how many mics you want to use. So if you have an eight track one, that gives you the possibility of eight microphones. So if you want to use that, then you obviously have to have eight different microphones that you can use. Many of them also have inputs for, you can plug your phone in and play pre-recorded music from there, things like that. So if you want to play live tracks, and, or if you want to play live to tracks and record all that, you can do that too. So they give you a lot of capabilities. Again, Zoom and Tascam are probably the two biggest names out there. And budget-wise, they'll run you from probably about $450 on up, depending on the number of channels and capabilities you want. But really, in the, the $500 range, there's a lot of really good units available today. And the sound quality is, is fantastic. It's amazing how you know things have really improved. And so many people are doing their home recording today. So the industry has really shifted in that direction. And the companies are producing you know, just fantastic self-contained units like that, or again, the portable audio recorders. The quality is, is quite amazing there. 
Now, the fourth method is a little more involved, but it's the best method. It's, it's what I use a lot, and that's what I do right here in my studio. When I'm recording live at a session that I'm playing or that, I always use my Zoom recorder and usually some external mics for better quality. I then bring it back here and process everything here in the studio. But here, the way I record is I use an audio interface that goes into my computer. <laughs> there we go. Now, an audio interface is just that. It's an interface. It doesn't record. What it is, is you plug your mics or instruments into it, you come out of it and go into your computer. So it's purely an interface. There's no SD cards, there, there's nothing like that. So you need to use it with a computer. Now this is a two-channel one. I have two inputs in the front. You can get single-channel ones, which are usually called solo. You can get two-channel, four-channel, and eight channel and now there's some bigger ones with like 12 and 16 channels on them but you can also with some of them stack them so you can get two eight channel units plug one into the back of the other and you have 16 channels of recording going into your computer this one is two channels like i said this stays on my desk where i do all my mixing and video editing and I use it as an audio interface to run my monitor speakers or listen on headphones. There's a headphone jack here. I also use it for overdub recording. If I'm mixing something and I need to drop in some percussion or a keyboard or some sort of an effect, I can plug into here either a mic or the instrument direct and then drop that into my recording. And I also use it for voiceover work. Just drop a mic in here and I can do a voiceover on a video or some other project. So that's all I really need there is the two channel unit on my desk. Now over here in this part, uh, this is my instrument studio part. I use a bigger unit. And this one has eight channels. Both of these are by Focusrite, which makes a lot of quality interfaces in different price ranges. So this is essentially the same thing as this, only eight channels. So we have eight volume knobs. There are two convenient inputs on the front. And if we turn it around, we have six more inputs on the back. They work exactly the same way. This one has two headphone jacks as opposed to one, so it's great if you're recording with somebody else. You can both listen. But otherwise, they're essentially the same units. And a, a four-channel unit would be the same, only would just have four channels. So a big thing just depends on how you plan to record. If you just want to record one mic at a time or record in stereo, a two channel unit is perfect. And these will start at probably about $179, $150, somewhere in that range on up. And you get, can get a lot of good quality out of those units and they're easy to use and they're also very portable. You could just bring this and your mics and your laptop to a gig and record with that. Now, if you need more channels, like I said, you can often get a four-channel version from various companies or move up into an eight-channel. So here, if I was going to put spot mics on different gongs and instruments and things like that, yeah, I'm going to use more than two channels if I'm not just recording stereo. I often record a stereo pair back in the room over there, and then I will have 
close-up mics on specific gongs or instruments or drums or whatever I'm using. So it's very versatile having more channels. But again, these are just interfaces. They do not record. They do not have SD cards to store the information. It's just an in and a through into your computer. But what they do is they allow you to control the volume of your mic and they bump up the signal and they allow you to actually plug a mic into your computer because computers do not have microphone inputs. So that's the fourth way. Uh, there's a lot of good brands out there. Focusrite is one. There, there's all kinds of other brands that are available and more and more keep coming out because again home recording is become such a big thing I think especially with the pandemic the past few years people are stuck at home and it's like oh I'm gonna get some recording gear and since I'm sitting here I'm just gonna record stuff so it's really exploded but that's it those are the four basic methods of recording and again the two things you have to think of is one what is your budget how much do you want to spend because you could spend thousands and thousands of dollars easily and the other thing would be you know what is your knowledge base as far as this to get some high quality mics and an interface and a, use a computer and use a program like logic and all this sort of stuff to cr create an end product you have to have some sort of knowledge and skill as far as recording and doing all this. So those are the two big criteria, I would say. So at its most basic, number one, just start with a self-contained digital recorder. $100 up to like $500. Put it on a stand, either a mic stand or a little, you know, a little desk stand, or even just set it on a chair. Hit record, play, record your stuff. You could plug headphones into it and listen back and see how it sounds. If you want to process it, then take the SD card, pop it into your computer, and transfer your tracks there to process. And everybody has a computer nowadays that's probably capable of having some sort of audio program if it doesn't already have one. Next step would be a little bigger self-contained unit. External microphones, you're getting better quality. You're also getting more choice. You can choose what microphones you want, not just the built-in ones. Same process, SD card into your computer, into your audio program of choice. Third method, all self-contained mixer, recorder in one unit. You don't need the computer. You can do everything on board to create a finished product or you have the option of again taking your tracks out of there putting them into your computer and finishing them there if you want and then the fourth method microphones into an audio interface into your computer and record that way no recording capabilities here just a microphone input so that you can get things into your computer but it gives you the most options, different sort of mics, uh, different channels going into your computer. Now, as far as the audio programs, like I said, you can go with Audacity, which is free. And it's a great little program you can learn from. It will allow you to edit your audio. There are other smaller programs like um, Vision from Rogue Amoeba, which works on the Mac platform. Another nice editing one. Uh, there's quite a few you know, smaller programs like that. Then you can go into full-blown recording and editing software like GarageBand, Reaper, Pro Tools, uh, Cubase, Mixbus, and of course, GarageBand on your Mac, which is free on your Mac or your iPad or even your phone. So check all those out. Look things up on the internet. Look up 
things on the Zoom website, the Tascam website. There's a lot of good information on there. Go to Sweetwater.com. They're one of the bigger dealers in the U.S., and they have a lot of good information on there. They have a lot of videos and articles on um, buying an interface, what are the different types and different things out there, uh, different types of microphones. They have things on you know, all the different types of recorders and things like that. So they have a lot of educational content there. Same thing, you can go to B&H Photo, another big dealer. They sell a lot of audio gear like this too. At, do your homework. That's the main thing. And then even if you just start out with a basic $100 recorder, look up some articles and YouTube videos on recording. Take whatever recorder. If you get like a Zoom H1N, just Google that and how do I use it? You'll find all kinds of videos on YouTube and articles to help you get the most out of it. And from there, you can grow. Now, again, you know, I just wouldn't say if you're a beginner at this, don't go out and buy a bunch of mics and an interface and put it all on your computer because that can become overwhelming. Start a little smaller with just a, a handheld digital recorder. Learn how that goes. That's what I did 20 some years ago. Although I've been recording with tape and, and all that since way back in the 70s. But I got my first handheld digital probably about 2000, somewhere around there. And I worked with that and recorded all kinds of live gigs and recorded stuff here and really learned how to get the most out of it. And then it's like, okay, I want to do more. So I got a bigger unit from there. And then from there, I got like the H6 so I could plug in external microphones. From there, it's like, I want to do more. So I got interfaces so I could go directly into my computer with more microphones and more capabilities. But it's a big learning curve. So like I said, if you don't know a lot, start basically. You can always keep that gear. I mean, I have microphones I bought over 40 years ago, I still have and still use. Um, even my, my older digital recorders I still have. They still work. I can use them in a pinch. I like to just bring them around for field recording and things like that, you know, like birds and nature, surf, you know, definite field type stuff. They're still valuable. And, you know, work from there. Build it up. And before you know it, you know, you start to get an idea of what you want in gear. So that's why I said, you don't want to go out and buy all kinds of gear without knowing about it because you could buy the wrong gear for your needs and you might just buy gear that just, you know, just doesn't do anything for you. So as you get your knowledge base built up, you can navigate some sort of direction as far as how do I want to go with my recording? What sort of things do I want? Okay, I want to add microphones to a dedicated digital recorder with external inputs. What kind of microphones? You got to learn about all the different types of mics out there. What will be good for the type of recording I want to do? Same thing, interfaces. Okay, I want to get an interface to give me a little more capabilities what sort of interface and again what sort of mics do I want to do to go into that so I hope this has helped a little answer some of those questions that some of the people have brought to me recently about yeah I saw some of your other videos but I'm still a little mm, not quite sure what direction to go in so have a good day get yourself a recorder and just record and listen to yourself play. It's a great learning tool. It's the best learning tool out there because when we're playing, we can't hear ourselves. But if you record yourself, you can listen back to it and go, oh, that's what I sound like. That's what happened. I record every gig I play. I have 40 years worth of recordings on cassettes, on reel to reels, on dat tapes, and digital on SD cards and that. So record what you do, listen to it, learn from it, and then learn to record better quality.
Now I'd like to do a little recording demo for you. Show you how all this works and a typical setup I work with. First off, I'm wearing, it's hard to see black on black, but I'm wearing a very small lavalier microphone that's connected to my uh, video recorder. And if I'm just doing a speaking part, just a talking, I will just use this microphone because it's great for my voice. But if I'm recording instruments, I will go to a larger setup because this doesn't handle the instruments very well, distorts easily in that. But for my voice, as you can hear, it's fine. So let's look at my typical recording setup that I use for these videos and for other situations. And it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Everything starts with the microphones. So I have a pair of microphones here. These are SE4400 large diaphragm condenser microphones. I like those a lot and they're pretty much set up here in my studio all the time. So when I want to capture audio, they're ready. I have them on the cardioid pattern right now. They're a multi-pattern mic with the cardioid. It just picks up basically from the front and they are in the XY setup. So they're picking up left and right sounds like that. So that's the first part. So I've got my microphones, I've got cables plugged into them. The cables come down, they go into an audio interface. And in this case, it's my eight channel focus right. So runs into here. This does no recording. It's merely an interface to gather all the microphones and amplify the signal enough that you can hear it and use it. From here, there's a USB out on the back. It goes over into my laptop here. You could use a laptop or a desktop, whatever computer you have. This is just one of my MacBooks. And then from here, the signal goes into audio recording software, commonly known as DAW or DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. So my DAW of choice is Logic, which is a Mac only one. There's plenty of great DAWs out there. You can find Reaper and Cubase and Pro Tools and others, Mixbus, uh, you know, find things that work for you. I happen to like Logic a lot. In, if you have any Mac product, you have GarageBand, which is a junior light version of Logic. So anyway, so just to reiterate, here's my signal chain. Microphones, cables plugged into them, cables plugged into an audio interface, and then a cable from that going into a computer, which is armed with my recording software. So let's see if I can do this upside down here. Let me hit record. I've got the metronome on. I usually turn that off because I'm not dealing with a click or anything here. But you can see here's our red area. And so we're recording. It's showing us that we're recording. So I'm going to play a short improv here on the gongs. And then in post-production, when I put the video together, when I do the actual playing on the gongs, I won't be using the lavalier mic. I'll be using the room mics so I get better audio. And that's what I typically do is in post-production, as they call it, I will bring in uh, different audio for the, the playing parts. Okay, let's play something.
Okay, there we go. Just a, a soundscape. Improvised soundscape on the gongs. So to just reiterate the recording setup, a stereo pair of microphones. The cables are plugged into an audio interface, which is merely an interface to amplify the sound of the microphones. It does no recording on its own. That runs into my MacBook, which is doing the actual recording here in my DAW, my recording software, in this case Logic. And that's all it is. And with this, I could plug in eight microphones, so I could have you know, individual mics and some room mics and have eight channels going in to my DAW. It's all depending on how complex you want it. Or now I could turn around, put that on two, the mics on two more tracks, and I could overdub something on top of that. Put in my headphones coming out of here so I can hear what I previously played. And then, you know, maybe take some different mallets, different gongs, maybe some shakers or bells, whatever. Overdub sounds on top of that. And I can do that as many times as I'd want. And I could overdub them in stereo. Or in the case, if I was playing like a hand drum, I would probably just use one microphone focused on the drum. Let's say like a conga or a doombeck or something and just be playing there. I'd have my one microphone in front of the drum picking that up. I could put multiple drums on there, you know, just change a drum for each track. Going back and adding tracks on here. And it's pretty much the limit is how much computing power you have in your computer as far as how many tracks you can run. So there we go. Basic recording with different setups and then a quick demo here of what I typically use for recording down here in my studio for either release or for the, the quality sound of the actual instruments on my videos. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe down below. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, and we will see you next time on It's Cup of Time.